Well, I'm leaving the MCAT. I just took it in that building. Oh my gosh. So as many of you might already know, I took the MCAT on May 26th. And today I am going to be sharing my reaction to the exam, how I felt about it, and just my overall predictions of how I think my score might look. And if you're new here, my name is Sam and I have been sharing my MCAT journey all the way up until this point. I definitely plan to continue sharing my experiences as I go down this path to medicine. So if you're interested in seeing more of that, definitely hit that subscribe button and follow along. I would love to have you as part of the journey. So yeah, like I said, today's video is just going to be my thoughts about the May 26th MCAT exam that I took about a week ago now. All right, so starting with my overall thoughts about the exam and then we'll get into my section specific thoughts and expectations. Overall, I felt like the exam was very fair. I felt like it was representative of practice exams and I don't think the double AMC threw anything super unexpected at us or anything that I would consider very unfair. That being said, my thoughts on my actual performance don't necessarily match this reflection of the overall exam and I don't feel like I did my best. So let's go ahead and walk through each section. I'll go ahead and give you the rundown about where I was at prior to going into the exam and how I felt from that ex specific exam day section one by one. So the first section of the exam, as you guys know, that's the chem phys section, testing on general chemistry, organic chemistry, physics, and they do like to trickle in biochemistry, even though biochem is also in another section. This section started as my worst section. On my diagnostic exam in this section, I scored a 120, which is a pretty low score. And overall, this section always felt pretty intimidating for me because physics and organic chemistry gave me a lot of trouble in undergrad. And I was just very nervous about studying for this section. With that being said, this section ended up being the one where I saw the most improvement over the course of my studying. And my highest practice exam score ended up being a 128 which I felt really good about and really proud of. There still were things when I went into the exam that I had content deficits on and things that I could improve on going forward in the future. But overall, I felt pretty proud of myself about where I was at and I went into the exam feeling like I mastered this section to my abilities and I felt okay about the section. I wasn't super intimidated by it anymore. So I felt pretty good um, going into the exam. As far as my actual exam day reaction for this section, I felt like it was very fair. I felt good about this section. I was pleased with my performance on exam day. And one thing that I think really makes me feel that way is that I finished. I finished the entire section, I read every single question, and I had three minutes to spare to go through all of my flagged questions. I don't think I really changed much, but I at least could take a step back. I knew I finished and I could just go through and remind myself of what I thought was confusing on the exam. So with regards to how the exam compared to practice exams and how I performed, I feel like this was the best I could have done with the knowledge that I had and I just felt good. I felt good about this section and I was pretty okay once I left. Timing has always been an issue for me on practice exams with every section except for the psychology and sociology section. So there would be some practice exams where I didn't get to read all the passages on chem phys and I noticed that that was usually super detrimental to my score. And when I finished the whole section, and this goes with all of them, but when I finished the whole section, I feel like I really give myself a better shot of showing my skill set and doing well in that section. So the fact that I finished made me feel really good. And I left that section being like, okay, this exam is going well. And I was happy about it. So moving on, we are now in the CARS section. CARS has always been one of my stronger sections on my diagnostic. I scored a 125, which isn't amazing, but it was a good starting point for me. I actually only got my CARS score up to a 128 on my best practice exam, so nothing crazy, but I do remember it was in the 90th percentile for the exam. So I felt like that was a pretty good score. And yeah, overall, CARS is usually very hit or miss for me. Like if I, during practice, would get passages that are very dense and on topics that I don't necessarily naturally find interest in, it's definitely more difficult for me. And I feel like this is a shared experience 
from what I've read and seen. And generally, I felt okay about the cars section. As for cars on actual exam day, I was a little disappointed. I didn't manage my time well and I ended up leaving the last passage as just a skim. I remember I got to the last passage with four minutes left in the whole section, which is really bad. Typically, I try to read a passage within four minutes and then answer each question within one minute, which means that going into the last passage, there were seven questions. I should have had 11 minutes to do that whole passage and I had four minutes. I remember just feeling so like disappointed and defeated even in that moment, like, oh gosh, like I'm not gonna be able to read this in its entirety. And it was just not a great feeling. So, but it was totally on me. I didn't manage my time well. I think I got stuck on one of the first or second passages and spent way too much time and it just derailed me for the rest of the section. Yeah, that's seven questions at the end that I'm basically guessing on because you can't really get that much out of skimming a passage when it comes to the questions that are asked on the MCAT. Yeah, I feel like not finishing or not managing your time well on a section is the worst way to lose points. So it's just a very disappointing feeling when you leave and you know you could have done better because you didn't even get to show your full potential because you didn't finish. But yeah, overall with cars, I do feel like my issues were very much a personal downfall. I felt like the passages were very fair. Similar to the rest of the exam, I really did feel like they were fair. I feel like they weren't too long. They were on topics that were actually pretty okay and pretty understandable. Cause sometimes, and if you've done practice, you know, sometimes you read a car's passage and you're like, what the heck is this talking about? You know, sometimes it just feels like it's impossible, but these passages on test day didn't feel impossible. And I know I could have scored better than I probably did. Um, just because, like I said, not getting to that last passage was a huge downfall in that section. So I'm not totally sure what to expect, but I don't really expect my highest car score because of that. We'll just have to see when scores come out. Moving on to bio and biochem, my worst nightmare. So the bio biochem section has always been a weak spot for me. I think my diagnostic score, if I remember correctly, was about a 123. And this is the area where I showed the least improvement. My highest bio biochem score on a double AMC practice exam was a 126, which really isn't that good. I really do still feel like I have tons of content gaps when it comes to bio and biochem, and I didn't drill these topics enough. Like, hands down, did not drill them enough. If I'm, if I retake the MCAT, which maybe I will, depending on what my score looks like, there's so much improvement that I could make in this section and in all the sections, but I really don't think I drilled home bio biochem enough. I didn't go into the exam feeling super confident in this section. I was really just hoping that it would play into my strengths and that I would kind of get lucky because I knew I had content gaps. So if you're out there and you're studying and you have weak spots, just drill them. I know it's so annoying, but just do it. You know that you, you know that they're there. I knew that they were there. I had this like cloud hanging over me, like, Sam, you still don't know bio and biochem. Like, come on, what are you doing? As far as exam day goes on the actual bio biochem section, I feel horrible, by far my worst section. Similar to the rest of the exam though, aside from my performance, I feel like it was probably really fair. I just had a ton of content gaps and I also was feeling very fatigued by this point in the exam. The passages were not too long and overall, I feel like if you knew your stuff in bio biochem, this was probably an easy section for you. But for me, it wasn't. And if you took the May 26th exam and you love bio biochem, let me know if you thought it was easy. Yeah, overall, if you knew this section, I really felt like they were testing on reasonable topics and it just didn't seem that hard, which was a little bit even more disappointing because it's one thing if you have weaknesses and then you look at the exam and you're like, oh, this is terrible because it's like, oh, well, it's probably terrible for most people. But for me, it was like, oh, this doesn't look that bad, but I just don't know this. It's definitely on me. I didn't review enough and I know that, but I'm just happy I actually took it and I did it. And if I have to take it again, I know I will address these content gaps. So not only did I flag majority of the questions in this section, I also didn't finish. Um, so similar to the car section, but worse, I had two passages of bio biochem that I just completely did not read. Um, and if you know the structure of the MCAT and the sections in the bio biochem section and chem phys, there's passages and then there's discrete questions. So I remember I looked at the clock and I had like maybe five minutes left 
and I still had two passages and then the last three discrete questions. So I skipped over the passages and I went to the discrete questions because I just felt like I had a better shot of answering those. I answered them and then I went back to the passages and I tried my best, but I really didn't read them. So that's me guessing on, I think about eight questions, which is so bad. 100% this is gonna be my worst section. Really didn't feel like it was that bad if you knew your stuff. So that's totally on me. We'll see how it goes and I'm crossing my fingers and hoping I had some good guesses, but I don't feel good about that section. So going into the last section of the exam and my favorite section, psychology and sociology, this section has always been my favorite section. It has always consistently felt like a break from the rest of the sections and I consistently finish this section with about 15 to 20 minutes left over, which is such a change from the other sections where I'm grappling for time. My diagnostic for the psychology sociology section was a 127, which is already pretty decent. And I got my score up to a 131 on my best double AMC practice exam. So I was feeling very confident going into the exam about this section. On test day, however, I was a little bit disappointed. Based on representativeness, out of all of the sections on the exam, I felt like this one might have been the least representative of all the practice exams. Maybe it's just me, but I really didn't finish this section with the same confidence that I usually do. I usually finish and I'm like, yeah, that went well. This one was very iffy. I had a ton of 50-50 answers where I was just like, Ugh, I don't, I'm not sure, like these terms kind of sound similar. So I had a lot of 50-50 guesses that I had to make on this exam. And I felt also that this section was very sociology heavy this go around. And typically I feel like it's majority psychology and sociology is kind of like trickled in. But this one felt like there was multiple dedicated passages on just sociology. And I prefer psychology to sociology, so I was a little bit bummed about that. Yeah, overall I was a little bummed about this section in general. I really hope it went better than I thought, but I didn't feel like, oh good, like this one's going to carry me. Because I always felt like in my practice exams, I knew I could count on psychology and cars to at least like balance my score a little bit and make it look, make it a little bit better overall. But on this exam, I didn't feel great about either of those sections, which is just so disappointing, you know? So we will see what happens. Of course, I wish I felt better about the exam. I'm not sure if anybody leaves the eight hour MCAT exam and feels great about it, but I knew it wasn't my best performance. We'll just have to see. I get the score back at the end of this month. There's nothing really for me to do at this point in time. There's no point in stressing about it. If you're in a similar boat and you're waiting for your scores, like just give yourself some, some grace, let yourself relax and take this time to recoup. If we have to retake the exam, we are allowed to and it's okay. I am really proud of myself for taking it and just being done with this step. I had some tempting moments where I was like, oh, maybe I should move it, but I'm so happy to have just taken it because of course I know I could have done better had I moved it, but now I know what exam day feels like. I know what to expect. And if you're interested in what to expect, I actually will be putting out a video. My next video is going to be what to expect on MCAT exam day. So if you haven't taken it and you're really curious about actually what goes on on exam day and what to expect, um, it's something that I really was looking for when I was getting really anxious the week before. And I will definitely be putting that out. So definitely subscribe and follow along. I really feel like in this process, I learned so much about the exam and I came such a long way. And I think if I had to retake it again, I would go in feeling super confident about what I need to study, what I need to tackle, how practice exams are and how to actually do my practice in the most efficient way possible because it basically took me the whole eight, nine months, maybe eight months of me studying to really figure it all out. And that's a, a factor that I feel like people don't really take into account when they first start studying. It's like, you don't realize the whole time you're just figuring it out as you go. And by the end, you're like, wow, if I knew this in September when I started studying, I'd be golden. So I know that going into another round of studying, if I have to take the exam again, I'll feel pretty confident. And I would be kind of excited to, to do it again and just show my potential and show what I can really do because I know I can do better than the score that I got. Like I said, I'm just happy to be done and I can put my first attempt behind me. Thank you so much for following along on this journey. I'm so happy to have you guys here and I love interacting with you guys in the comments. Yeah, we'll see how the score looks at the end of the month. Hit that subscribe button so you can also 
be there when I open my score on June 27th. Oh, I just realized I didn't even share my score predictions. So let me really quickly share with you my, my section predictions and what I'm expecting. Um, for Chem Fizz, I felt pretty okay about it. I think I am expecting a 127. I'm hoping for that. Um, I mean, I'm hoping for higher, but I'm expecting a 127 in that section. Cars, I didn't feel great about it. I really think I'll probably be getting a 126. Bio Biochem felt terrible. I feel like I'll be lucky to get a 125. I'm kind of expecting something lower, maybe like a 124. And then Psych Soch, I'm expecting a 128, which is really low for me. I hope it's higher than that, but I feel like it was a 128. So. That's my predictions and kind of what I'm expecting to see. Thank you again for watching. I'm really happy to have you guys on the journey and I'm so excited to continue sharing with you. Give the video a like if you liked it. It definitely gives my channel a little boost and I will see you guys in my next video. I'm so excited to share this with you. Oxytocin, high on hoping that the way you love me can fix how I hate myself.